Yeah, I, I sorry, it's just an old team that we used to cast, and <laughs> sometimes I remember them, and we both agree we wouldn't talk about <laughs> it. Um, yeah, this this is like a real Kel'Thuzad player we have in Korea, like who's actually good, mm -hmm. and it makes sense. The chains were pick. awesome, and surprise, surprise, you can forget the other big macro map here. Oh man, and even though they don't really focus on the global, their rotation has been so working out. And I think the pick that works out so well for Blossom is Sonya. And mean we didn't really get to see too much Sonya like going in, doing damage, getting the kills. But off screen, she was always pushing lane, winning the top lane, getting all the camps so that they get the early start. So the other rotation, the other four man, can actually pressure into the lane and even they even if they don't, other side will be getting the value. Same with Rhaegar too, actually in that last game. Uh, pushing the lanes, clearing camps, helping to control that macro. And Sonya has been picked uh, two of the games for Blossom, mm -hmm. was banned by them in game uh, one, where it, the soul lane matters a lot, but they went, they want to go for the Zeratul comp, they moved completely away from that now. So will it be the Hanzo ban again here for Blossom? That's the big question. Uh, you know, it worked pretty well for them in game three. It's a more specifically strong map for Hanzo, but they do ban it again. Clearing the Sapper camps in light speed time, clearing the boss in light speed time, record time with Hanzo is very scary. Uh, so, if you just let the Hanzo through, then Leaves could, even though they're very weak at macro, control some aspects of that on this map. So, last time they took Malfurion first pick, mm -hmm. they were outbursted, outrotated, outplayed. They went for the Tranquility over Twilight Dream. I think that it's still a reasonable pick, but they're going to have to draft around the DPS as a Blossom better if they want to run the Malfurion here. Garrosh, though. This is the kind okay. of play you were talking about earlier because we saw so many Garrosh bans saying, take that away. There are way too many DPS. You can take the Genzi, but of course Hanzo's been. Hanzo is been, but there's Tracer. There are other DPS that's available, so why not just... Go towards the target where you have the best chance at. Take out the Garrosh or take away Garrosh. And it works out perfectly for OJ. He has been playing great Garrosh all throughout the season. It's not the most common pick, of course, but for this matchup, I think it's one of the best ones to pick right now in game number four. Where do you think Blossom goes with this? Uther, Uther Genji, old school safe. I just, I think, easy one, of course. Easy one would be... The Genji, I don't think they're going towards they that. They could go Mouth Tracer. Because Malfurion works well with Garrosh. I think they want to counter that pick right now. They can still have Genji. And also bring in Medib later on if they want to. But it is going to be Tracer. So they take the DPS first. They take control of the damage. Tracer's fantastic on this map, but harassing. Actually one of her more famous maps um, when she was released along with Medib. Genji will be taken with the Uther against them, though, and that's a scary thought to face this on this map. But what else can Blossom do in terms of macro is the next question here. They ran the Rhaegar, obviously, it was a different support that gave them more control of the macro. Sonya was very successful previously. Police will likely ban the Sonya here. So, what should Blossom ban in response? If this is to be true, and if they could predict this, it's a tough question. As there's a lot of soul laners available. Wiz is a terrifying player to lane against and is very good at controlling some aspects of macro with his soul lane play. Supports are gone. They already have Garrosh. Time to target the solo lane, I think. Do you ban the Malthale here just straight up? I don't think Martel was a big problem after game three. I don't think they will be even thinking about that pick. Possibly Blaze or Dehaka. They do have Avatar up there. Banning a potential global that could empower Genji. Or even a 0-2 last pick. Yeah, I like it. This also means that they can choose between Sonya and uh, Malthale. Whichever one they don't ban, you can take it. If you don't want to run the Dahaka, if you don't want to run the Leoric in this comp, which we haven't seen a single one in this series of those two soul laners, you get the better soul laner. So Feliz probably, if Feliz is thinking the same thing that I am, they probably ban neither. They 
because they can take the other one at least. Yes. So they have that backup plan, but if they ban one and Blossom takes the other, they basically shot themselves in the foot. Of course, that's why they're going for the tank. ETC, not really the best one, I would say. They already have Garrosh and soft counter is ETC. It's already a good matchup for Gar Garrosh. Maybe they think the extra potential CC Maybe even a stage dive on this map could be a problem, so maybe that's a good ban. Do you want to deny the potential Tormented Souls Divine Shield, grab Malthea, win the matchup, but trade off cap clear time? Or do you want to take the the faster uh, camp clear in exchange for your opponent having Malthea and that combo? You're running a Tracer comp, so mm -hmm. Tracer is not really afraid of that damage over time from Malthea, so that's one reason why you could argue for the Sonya. They've controlled macro with the Sonya. Also, uh, Blaze uh, bunker for the pulse bomb counter. I think that's also should be yeah. That should be in everyone's mind. So yeah, so they want to take it for themselves potentially. So Blaze can't do that. It's a good point. Terial also an option. Holding onto it, grabbing the Anubrox, so denying the Blaze pick. And, and also comes in. And also, etc was Gondar's second most picked. I believe after Garrosh, so he was, he was forced to go into Nubarak. Not his best hero to play it. Play in, play with, of course. Play on, play with, whatever you want. You, you, you're fine, you live everything you're saying. Play, right. play on Nubarak. <laughs> Do it. The Beatles. Let's see. Where is Gondar? Okay, Garrosh, ETC, and Tyrael. Right below that, uh, uh, Nubarak. Tyrael four times, Nubarak. Nubarak ten times in total, including 2017. Mm -hmm. And of course, it ETC used to be Stitches 15. a lot more yeah. back in 2017, but Stitches gone. Yeah, 18 games at Garrosh, so Anubarak is definitely his second best pick statistically at the moment. Locking a Tychus in early here. Soul Laner, I feel like, has to be Mouth Ale. You have a good pairing for it. Ooh, they're going for trying to counteract some of the macro aspects. The cool thing about Mouth Ale is you will help burn through Blaze and Anubarak in team fights. Mm -hmm. Dahaka is really going to struggle to grab Tracer. Can grab Anubarak though, there's a lot of things you can do with that. And Gondar has been known to be a hyper aggressive Anubarak, so that is uh, one thing that you can use against him. And I think Dahaka pretty good. Isolation onto Tracer will be the best thing ever for Felice. No blink, no recall. Basically Easier said than done, but yeah. But it did happen a few times in Eastern Clash, and basically that trapped down Tracer, that was the kill, and it was the end of the team fight for some teams. And Dehaka also providing global, they were having the problem with the macro in game 2 and 3. Dehaka could solve a lot of that, of course, they don't have a Sonya here. But let's see there, but Dehaka is against the Blaze, should be an okay matchup on the top. What about just a dunk right here? Close it out, some extra peel, extra DPS, great delay on altars. Mage is available as well, but Junkrat feels safe. They go with the Mage pick. This is super all in on the Tracer. This is not strong by any means against the composition that Feliz is running with Polybomb, for example. This I don't even think is going to be a Polybomb pick. DPS and Harassment. This has always been Medivh's battleground in Korea with Rich being the pioneer of the hero with uh, you know, basically getting Master Touch faster than anybody else. Mm -hmm. when, when Medivh was released during the 2016 Summer Global Championship, I remember I went to a PC bong and Rich like stayed all night and was trying to show everyone and like Grandmaster EU like, how he was able to top hero damage every game he played Medivh no matter what map it was. <laughs> but then he used it in pro games in Korea in Super League in Season 3 to show how much Medivh with his cooldown reduction can delay. This is going to be a little bit of both. Delay for the Medivh and protection for the Tracer. That's right. And that puts a lot more pressure onto Tracer's, Tracer's shoulders there. Dutu has to put out maximum damage. They have to land every single CC. Which target is the best one, though? I'm wondering. The armor from Uther would be super powerful against all that burst, the pulse bomb. And... Can you really find another target? Pulse on the Genji, pretty hard. Taika's a lot tankier than the other ranged assassins. Yeah, I mean, it, it, you have to wait for the uh, the deflect to be worn off or go for Garrosh so that the burst can help go through his shield. 
Not going to be the strongest pick. Unusual talent at level 1 for Blaze, actually. Different stim than what we normally see. Normally see the mana one, the purple one. I think it's the auto attack one. Yeah, it is. It's less common in Korea. Also, regen master for Anubarak. Oh, unusual will, talents. It will take a lot of teamwork for Blossom to actually make a kill. Even past 10, past level 20. Medivh, of course, by that time will also gain some power with those stacks. See how well they can trap one target in the bowl. Deny the portal. If you can save. do that consistently, that's pretty sick. About a great save by Wiz right there. Hitting that AoE stun to save his teammate. Pretty scary thought, though. What's going to happen later on with later death timers if Medivh portals are getting shut down by Garrosh tosses. The Garrosh pick, I think, was a great adjustment here for Feliz. No OJ, you know, struggling on the ETC, they ban it. Mm -hmm. This makes a lot more sense. One thing that will be somewhat harassing from Feliz's side will be that Medivh. From, is it going to be that Polybomb or... I think it's going to be Leyline. Because Polybomb... Look at how everyone's going to stand in the team fight. This is not a sanctification comp. There's no Malfurion on the side of police. There's no reason to group. Like, I can't see why Polybomb would be chosen. There's only one area of the map where you're going to have a big fight where everyone's clumped, and that's going to be the boss. I Maybe a camp, but like that's less realistic. But you know me. I, want to, I always want to argue. Trap one with the cocoon, and then make sure you have another one being in the chicken. And okay, I see you, what you're saying. You create a better situation for the team. You can focus the damage. And maybe better with the lane line. If you can just isolate one target. But that's not the easiest thing to do. It's very slow. You could theoretically cocoon Uther, for example, right? Mm -hmm. And the second he's about to come out of the cocoon, lane line seal him. And then just keep him out of the fight. That's obviously, again, easier said than done. But... Let's see how these fights work out before 10, before we start getting too, uh, you know, in-depth about what will be chosen. Because there might be some adjustments based on how this game starts to evolve. The biggest challenge, like you said, I think you said it very well. Due to his Pulse Bomb targets are realistically only the Tychus. And he hit one earlier, but it didn't matter because there's no follow-up damage. Medivh's damage is very slow. Although, look at this angle, OJ! Caught here, gonna get burst down to very low, but does survive with this armor. Really good angle coming through from Gondar, though, on the Anubarak. Unfortunately, it's not enough, but the way that fight was taken initially there was fantastic. If they had any other DPS besides Mediv, which, again, I don't even want to call him a DPS, but if they had any other source of damage and, and any other pick besides the Mediv, that would have been a kill for sure. Because the Haka did not brush talk all the way down, was able to get a few more few more but Hanaton was super passive and he was he wanted to join the team fight it seemed like for a second I think he had more than enough time to clear the wave a few seconds earlier could have got a lot more exp also go for go for the camp time he had lots of times but he was very passive and that's what you usually see from Hanaton when he plays the Haka Gondar as well uh, you know allowed that channel to go through with all the CC's too so Hanaten coming down might have turned things, for sure. But I'm going to live in the present now, not the past, as Blaze is dominating that top lane. Another Pulse Bomb's ready. I think this would be an opportunity for Blossom to commit to an invade on the red side Sapper Camp. Especially with all the damage Modern Life has been able to put on. Modern Life is killing it tonight. It's hitting a lot of Qs early in this early game. And they look at the lane control here. I would like to see an invade potentially. They're going to hide it if they do it. It's like just not confident enough. Going to try to set up a trap for Frankel, make it look like they're invading, and then catch Frankel on the rotation, but they show too early. Frankel is going to have to hearth home in this double altar phase. Great force of will there. Dude takes not a single point of damage, not a single one. Okay, Genzi actually goes all the way back home. Yeah, he hearthed. And he does have. The Swift Strike to join into the fight. And they de delay enough time for him to come back. That's a great sign of teamwork there. Well, already 
Altar on the left side has been gone for Blossom. They, all they have to do is land some TC, make sure Dudu can create the angle to pick up that kill with the Pulse Bomb. Okay, Stun comes in on the Gondor, but he's in great position to continue to deny this. Frankel is toying with death right now with his positioning. Pushed away by the Beatles at the moment. Modern jumps out of Raven form. Gondar gets tossed in, but he's in a great position to come out here and grab the stun. Pulse Bomb comes in. No mitigation here. Bursting right through that shield again. It's the target. Garrosh, he wants more than anything. Hanaten going to heal through this with his trait. Pulse Bomb. Body of, bluff from Gondar yeah. is amazing right there. Pulse Bomb already used. Not enough damage there to toss another one out. So Hanaten lives for so long. Lives even more here from Uther's Ghost. That's going to end up dying here. Can Blossom re-engage? I think so. Nasong's low on mana, though. Are they just simply going to let this one go and go look for a 10? Or maybe Gondar delays this so they grab 10 and look for a fight. We're going to find out if it's going to be that Force of Will or not, or excuse me, the Leyline Seal or not. They failed to interrupt. That's actually the saddest thing. Twice in a row now they've had these like last-minute failed interrupts on the side of Blossom. And we're going to at the very end. Cocoon they do the Polybomb, yeah. Not, not uh, what I expected. This time you're right on the heroic debate. See baseline master touch will finish pretty quick actually. Yeah, 650. We've had it interrupted a few times uh, this week. Modern is playing up superb tonight as he's filling the flex role. Hanaton, where he joined the fight, the bush that he came in was kind of weird. No damage could follow up. And even that was uh, cleansed by nature, Nature's Cure from Nasa. Really getting lost. They're, they should be controlling the macro, but they're just outplayed by the Blaze. Losing the top lane so hard right now. Yeah, and I mean, Modern Life is just tearing through them with poke damage. He finished his Master's Touch. Look at how much damage he can do. Obviously, this is slightly less powerful than it would have been uh, pre-rework, but like, it's still very strong. It's a strong pick. Medivh with his extra utility now that he has with his heals, and that people suddenly realize Polybomb is actually pretty strong. He's he's doing a lot here. Sometimes all it takes is a, is a rework for people to practice a hero a lot, and even if the hero in some aspects is weaker than it was before, he starts seeing a lot of play, and it's a great example of that. So Medivh map, always in Korea, is then the map we saw the most Medivh on. Hey, Wolf. Yeah. It is X-Strike. Okay. I just saw this. I just noticed as well. I just assumed it would be Dragon Blade. Uh... Seems bad, right? Like Taunt, isolation, burst damage. Okay, this is what they want, but it's on a tracer. They actually get a kill. I mean, Blossom did get the kill. Self-divine shield here onto Liu. Here's the cocoon. No damage with Tychus. They could dive deep. Tranquility. I isolation missed right there. Nathan tries to turn this back. Tychus will be getting that CC. Oh, man. There is this no is the escape. Liu's going to die as well. Portal to allow more members to join this fight. Oh, due to missed the last few auto attacks there. So he actually does get out, but Pulse Bomb to guarantee this so they can have a faster rotation. I actually love how uh, adamant Dudu is using his Pulse Bombs consistently, like all the time. Like, even something like this, I like it because it means they get this faster, they get the five shot. They can build it again before the next team fight. And I also like how he's been killing Garrosh. His focus has been Garrosh every time to burst through that armor. Sometimes it may not be enough, but he has been holding for the right opportunity only. He doesn't really throw it down to random heroes all the time. He's a different type of Tracer player. He yeah. holds it for such a long time, so Liu has to be holding in that queue to hold and to heal his teammates to get their armor so that they survive that pulse bomb. But because of that, he can't really give any heals to the other people. Yeah, in some respects, he doesn't hold because he's willing to hit the garage, but like, he holds it for only the Garrosh, you know, and like he could obviously kill Tychus several times. And he has used it on Tychus a few times because he has kind of like tossed it in early. Um, but like in these last few fights, he has been holding it for this Garrosh. He's got it now. The only, chance, an angle, that, though. The only chance that Felice can do, they are losing the top lane. It's impossible to really go for the macro, even for the Haka when you're losing that lane super bad. OG has to throw in the target, but. They know Blossom knows exactly that Doji is trying to do that. So they have the utility. Tracer can blink. Of course, Medivh can just protect anywhere. 
I think if they could try to force a fight, it would be sloppy, but I think their other chance would have been to ha Divine Shield of Dragon Blade to start an engage, but because they took X-Strike, that option is just simply not there. And they clear this camp immediately, but this is buying time for Blossom just to maintain their five shot. And the next uh, altar, they have control of its zone. 13's up for Feliz. The longer this goes, it's going to go towards Blossom. They don't even have a global. They just have Blaze, Blaze, who barely ever joined the team fight. Yeah, and Blaze, who's also been starting to work on that top wall, starting to threaten even potentially that top bell tower. If that happens, that's game over, RIP. So, here's Blaze, if they want to go for yeah. their own, they have to at least delay or stall this as long as possible. So, actually, Dehaga joins already. Okay, comes in early, was spotted early as well. Gondar's caught, though, in an awkward spot. Trying to help zone, trying to help peel. The main target here has been OJ. He's been the focus firing uh, of all these targets. And then the Pulse Bomb comes through. Divine Shield saves him this time. But again, he has no impact in this fight now. Frankel out of the fight. X-Strike, will we ever even see it used this game? I'm starting to lean towards no. Polybomb means OJ is zoned again. And OJ has been the weak leak for Feliz, and they are just trying to punish that. Here's a nice grab, though. Gondar gets the portal, though. Tranquility for the heals. OJ goes down. And this they is going to be a disaster. Everything. The last thing they needed was the midi for the protection for the portal. They have everything in their hands. The offensive CC, the defensive CC in their hands. Oh my god, Frankel almost dying to the, uh, the Qs here. Like, had they been a little bit more coordinated, they might have actually all just killed him. He can't even back. He's forced away. This is going to be a six bell tower game, I think. They, can, they should boss now, I think, instead of being super greedy, especially mm -hmm. look at the top wave. So, as the Haka is the global that they're struggling with, they're going to boss first. But maybe for one second, while bottom is being retaken, they can get six. Either way, that's always going to be a threat. And this has been a struggling series for Blossom, with a team that was clearly the favorites. But it feels like they finally hit their stride on these macro maps, Dragonshire and Towers of Doom. This is just painful to watch right now as police is not making any changes they're losing the four man the top lane it's happening since the beginning until now what else can they do throw in and the nubarak who's protected who will go into that portal very soon and <laughs> team and protection divine shield forced for a pulse bomb way better trade for the pulse bomb by there the way there is no way unless some big hiccup comes out from blossom themselves the police will not get a kill anytime soon x strike still hasn't been used yet just throwing that out there. That's going to be uh, used for an escape, maybe? I don't even know what... Uh, Possibly a misclick, I think. Yeah, that's what I was thinking earlier. I never want to say things like that, because I'm not sure. But, like, we have to entertain the possibility, right? And this might just be the end of the game. Divine Shield would never have empowered a Dragon Blade anyways, I guess you could argue, because it's been used either self-cast on Uther or onto OJ, who's been overextending. Okay, Tracer's gonna grab mid. Okay, no, not exactly. We'll win the fight here. Baits out this deflect, then pulse bombs, X Strike for the escape. I guess to get an extra deflect that we way. Saw, That's, we saw one finally. That actually saves the the game for them. They don't get all three altars. This actually that X Strike saves the game for them for they, the moment. They want to get the bell tower and the sapper is available. So anything, one shot will be the game. Well, two of the other bell tower goes down, so it was actually four. My bad. Yeah. So, it is going to be two required, but any boss will win the game. Any bell tower from here on out will win the game. They're going to have this escort here of these sappers. Protected, by the way, and the portal's available. Hanathan comes from the back, but no damage. We'll follow. Isolation onto Nubarak. Let's see. Okay. Strike is not there. This is really bad for Feliz. They need to retreat. These sappers are just going to crash into the bell tower at least. It's terrible for them, but could be worse if you could believe it. Bell tower survives. Frankel goes in. But for what? Backs away. Raven forms up. And they're just going to try to siege this. They have the better siege with Medivh. Even though Tychus is on the other side, they're going to look to just escort these minions into this bell tower so they can oh, get man, another they need grab. better pokes they might have to pop the odin and try to go engage right now they have 16. i think it's okay lots of hp i think it's okay to let this bell tower go anything's gonna kill you at this point so if you're trying to oh god another divine shield burn i don't think that was needed yeah definitely not but if you lose this bell tower like 
that's okay because anything's going to kill you. Losing this bell tower, you lose a little bit of map control, but like getting team wiped over saving this bell tower is mm -hmm. just simply not worth it. I think they should just let it go. They have to fight for these altars. I think they have less than 20 seconds for that GG. They're Seems that way. Here's There's the commitment. Cocoon. Yep, cocoon. Going in, bell tower's down. They can engage whatever they want to taunt. Is there no follow-up damage? Odin will be going down from the pulse bomb. Volley bomb going in here, connecting multiple times. Frankel's trying to sneak his way over to the left side. Already two are dead. The deflect comes out. X-Strike, though, already used. That's going to be the full team wipe here. And Blossom, they had a rough start to this series, but they come back on Dragonshire, Towers of Doom, Macro Maps, and win them with flying colors. OJ calls GG. Fitting he'd be the first to say it because his ETC play and his garage were always the target of Blossom. Always the focus of Modern Life's Medivh, looking for the pokes onto Garrosh specifically so that the burst coming through from the Pulse Bomb would break through that armor and they would get the kill again and again and again. And Blossom will take the 3-1 victory tonight. But they do so knowing that tonight's victory was much more difficult than it should have been. Mm -hmm. They needed that 3-0. Every point you can get against Feliz to try to catch up to get top three for midseason brawl. Then to be happy with some of the uh, experimentation, the Kel'Thuzad, the Mediv, but in terms of the scoreline, very unhappy. I wanted to see these numbers right here. More heals than Uther, by the way, for Nasong here. This is another one of those stories. Like every time, we have to mention like. And also Mediv. Yeah, Mediv having decent, obviously 12k, but uh, the 20k extra healing that a um, well, Fury can give you is quite significant in these cases. Damage from Dudu, 50k. A lot of those in the pulse bombs. Gondar soaking up so much yeah. damage and no Look at Wiz. death. Look at what Wiz was able to do in the top lane. You were talking about that a lot too. Did it doing more than Dahaka as a soul laner that doesn't have a, that doesn't have the ability to global. It is not the worst matchup as a Dahaka player, but uh, but still he was very passive and it was really hard for him to actually. Go push in. Blaze was winning that top two. Four man, we talked about it a lot. When they were tossed in, they were protected. There was a portal. So their Garrosh first pick, I initially thought it was on a very good one. And I think one of the one of the picks that should be changed was maybe Tychus. Because Tychus had to go really close in order to do any damage. But oft oftentimes, there was the Anubarak, which I was very surprised to be... To see Gondar oftentimes was not the best in Uborak, but this in this game he seemed actually really on point every yeah. single time. From the first altar phase where he was able to get that nice angle and get the big stuns mm -hmm. and then allow that channel it was pretty fantastic. I don't want to pick on the Garrosh pick per se, but I feel like OJ just was not able to deliver. Not able to get grabs enough, not able to tr punish the tracer. We saw a few grabs, but it was just never into the right spot. Mm -hmm. And it's tough to capitalize on grabs when Medivh's on the other side because he's protected by the way, portal by the way, Medivh by the way. Um, <laughs> yes. So, yeah, I mean, you have some trouble with the um, with the burst damage follow-up when you're only running a Tychus and a Genji. The Dragon Blade, I feel like maybe that was a misclick. We might get some clarification on that at some point, but uh, it's, uh, it's a little bit, you know... It didn't work out like they planned. It was a solid draft overall. The Medivh pick was smart. My big pick, my MVP uh, is Modern Life, 100%. Yeah, me too. Uh, and he was able to bring all that damage. Lots of mage also flexing in here and there. Whatever the team needs. He was always there. Maybe even Gondar. His play was so much better, as you mentioned. Basically, Blossom in Game 4 has outdrafted, countered what Feliz was trying to do. What Right when they saw that Garrosh... I don't think they knew that pick was coming, but after thinking such for such a long time, they were picking Malfurion and Tracer, and then after that, they knew exactly what to do. ETC was banned, and Gondar was confident enough to actually go into a new Barak and made that work. Very well done with the Medivh. Yeah. Well, we're going to jump into our interview after some highlights, which I guess are still being prepared. So you, G. Cuff and I are talking about like like breaking down the game, the draft, and some of those moments, mm -hmm. and like who we thought would be the MVP, and we do this little... This little small talk, we'll wait for the highlights to come, then we talk about the highlights a little bit, then we go in the interview. We're like stuck in like one of the process, like there's like one of the gears is jammed, so we didn't go to the highlight <laughs> video yet. We're like still stuck in the part where we do the post-game analysis.
If I be honest, after watching game there one and two, oh, there's the <laughs> result. Not the highlight yet. After watching game one and two, between the break, and you know what, you you saw my face. I was doing the fail fist motion. What happened to Blossom? They yeah. were so much better back in Easter. I think they were just getting warmed up, and they knew exactly what to do. They knew the weak points of Belize, the big macro play, and the experience. I think that's what they need right now. We talked about the MVP. We talked about some of the cool picks, but the worst pick today. Both series was the Zeratul pick. A completely oh, yes. non-functional, did not accomplish anything. It was by far the weakest pick of all uh, seven Did games we cast today. Yeah, including yesterday, too. Yeah. I think t today's uh, 2 zero two was one of the worst ones that we've ever seen. Maybe Void Prison, we were talking about the break, too. Uh, if that were to happen, it could have changed lots of team fights. And Wiz is pretty good on that. Void Prison, they also had the sanctification. They also had a T-Rail on their own side, I think. Well, was it was that game number two? I can't remember exactly, but still. It's a game, big game, game-changing tool, like sanctification, like a mosh pit. So I think Void Prison is still very viable, but Korean players like to go for that assassination. Well, let's take a look at some of the fights here. You can see this was a, that was just a mistake by uh, Modern Life getting super far down there. Okay, look at uh, these uh, Sunderings and the Basically, the setup of Twilight Dream was why this uh, anti-dive comp did so well in Game 1. And for those who missed Game 1 and wondered, well, the games, uh, you know, 3 and 4 were so one-sided. How the hell did Blossom win Game 1? It's just with sick, def or sorry, with Fleas win Game 1. With really sick defensive engagements. They picked this map, which I thought was really intelligent, based on how many fights you can take with defensive engagements against dive uh, on boss zones, on tributes. But the Medivh pick again was just too strong for them here, and they lost basically every fight versus uh, this Brightwing that kind of disrupted what they were trying to do. And Twilight Dream was interrupted, or basically Malfurion was killed in all these fights before they could even happen. And Hotten on the Zeratul did not accomplish anything. I think overall Hanaton was really weak today on his solo performance in that lane. Outplayed so much. Even from Modern, from Wiz oftentimes, on that solo 